lovely. Uh, there you go. It's, it's a wonderful Stade Francais jersey of yesteryear, isn't it? You know, celebrating what their existence in 1883, I think, something ridiculous like that. Gee, I hope they roll out that Warhol style, style jersey of Blanche de Castile. Love it. Matisse Lebel with a clean take in the air. As I said, it's a cold night in Paris, like hovering around zero degrees, but um, a dry night, which is fantastic. Ramos, not much time to kick it high, hits it high, perfectly taken there by Charles Lelois, just 19 years of age, and a good chance for them to get the ball out. Ward's getting the ball out. Here is Lester Etienne. He's a bit of a handful as well, wonderful player. This time the fullback, Leo Barry, getting involved. Brad Weber, little chip over the shop. It's a sneaky one as well, perfectly picked up. And they're taken forward there. Leo Barry, just 20 years of age, and playing some wonderful, wonderful rugby. Charge coming Merci. through from Gomez Cordella, one of the eldest players in the, uh, on the pitch tonight. Got the advantage, big charge coming from that man, Iri Goyan. Weber gets it out and takes it forward. Paul Gabriag. Segons this time. Nicely done. There's a little gap in the defence, but Etienne not too close to take the pass. Good face of play for Stade Francais. They'd like to get something from this. Oh, oh that is what a rip, what a jackal that is from Francois Cross. Richiano takes it forward and they're queuing up to get the ball out now. Super Barris getting involved. A little bit high there for uh, Retier, but we know how dangerous he is. They go again. So he'll buy the ball coming back to Lebel. Lebel, just watch the way that he just dances around. Seconds is not letting go. Like a good uh, fox terrier. Grabs hold of your ankles. He was doing the same there. <laughs> Turn over Paul once again. And a chance to make it uh, stand front say That's been snatched there. That is a penalty for Toulouse. Great work by uh, that number nine, Paul Grau. And now I can take a breather. <laughs> I was just going to say, everyone can. What a frenetic start to the match. Fantastic. Both teams are showing that, uh, that positive mentality. A couple of good turnovers too. A rip from Toulouse in the tackle. And then the counter ruck from Stade Francais when they saw a little opportunity there. Toulouse just trying to hold on to that ball a little bit too long on the ground. And they went driving over the top, turned it over, and straight away tried to attack. Here's Barre. We know he's a fly half as well, so he steps into that first receiver position pretty well. Here comes the rip from Toulouse. A little bit of a bobble, really, from Stade Francais, but already the game's showing plenty of fluidity. Yeah, when you've got a when you've got a lock who's driving the ball forward, you know, he's got to really make sure that he, he he literally needs to lock that ball in and sort of, you know, not make it too available. That was a big mistake there from Senti. Uh, perfectly taken there from Flam on Flam on the French International. Uh, good, uh, well organised driving ball. A couple of players getting their hands in there to try and uh, make a mess of that unsuccessfully. Peter Aki. Look at that from Ward. Really good stuff just to stop that man moving forward. Such a dangerous player as well. Here we go with uh, Paul Graham getting the ball into the hands of Thibaut Flamon. Uh, he goes again, Ramos waits, waits, and then delivers. LaBelle doesn't get the ball out wide, stuck. And, uh, oh, it's a wild pass, that is. Flicked up, picked up by Ramos. And, uh, well, that's a big hit there on Alba. Plassi, good work from Stade Francais. He was isolated, he hesitated, and Stade Francais went for the jugular. Definitely keen to counter-attack, aren't they, Toulouse, as they always have been. And some nice little touches there. Not every pass going to hand, but they managed to keep the ball alive. Ramos keeping it, uh, floating it out in the air, and they just ended up getting isolated a little bit. But really, both teams on point tonight, both with their, their ball movement and with their perception of when there's an opportunity here to counter-ruck and put the pressure on. There's the little tip that go back, goes back to Ramos. He flicks it out again. Not, oh, there's the flick again. They're just trying to get that ball into space as they do. And here's the final little part. Just a little isolated there. A good tackle around the legs. Chop tackle straight to ground. Doesn't give the support any time to get there. And the turnover occurs. And I think it was um, it was executed by Leo Barry, who's just been on fire since the very start. 
um, fearless at the breakdown, fearless uh, trying to jackal the ball. That's brilliant stuff. And this comes off the chop, and uh, whoever gets it uh, moving, Joris Sigons gets it out into the hands of the big Jeremy Ward. Already scored a few tries, they get driven back. Good, strong defensive play there from Toulouse. But it's been now uh, picked up, an opportunity here. That's good work to make that available and not uh, get, get caught out by the Toulouse defence. The former Chiefs scrum half with a bomb hit high. Lebel. Well, it's uh, gone backwards according to Monsieur Trainini. Matisse Lebel just uh, unable to keep that in his hands. Paul Grau this time, Cyril Bai. Runs into a bit of trouble, got to release the tackle player. Need to stay well out of there. A British for the spillage. And it's going to be a scrum. Well, this is what we're expecting from this uh, little uh, battle in the Western suburbs uh, in, in Western Paris. <laughs> I'm not sure what Ramos is going to really do there, but good on him getting in and trying to help his forwards out. The grappling contest goes on there. Nobody really wants to take a swing. I mean, even missing, you're going to get a card and, and go and cool your heels for 10 minutes. So nobody really wants to take a big swing, but plenty of feeling, and that was a good tackle. Really good gang tackle from Marchand and Ward. Sorry, from Chocobardis, I think it was, actually. He ended up dry, pulling, uh, pulling Ward back. He was trying to trying to break through, so they got on the front foot there. Obviously, it's a bit frustrating when you get get put on the back foot there. <laughs> Typical, always one set of headgear that gets ripped off somewhere. Jenny was a really good clean out there in the middle of all that from uh, Gabriag for Stade Francais. The ball was just about to be stolen by Toulouse, and he had to get in low. But he had to get in low and not seal it off and get penalised. So he had to drive right through, and it was absolutely textbook. If you could take that and you know show kids out there how to do it, you know a, a good low clean out. But then try not to copy what they were doing at the end of that piece of play. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I think that. Um, the, the tone's been set to a certain extent. We know that there's uh, no love lost between these guys. I mean, you know, the classic of this year, as I mentioned. But, you know, it was some feisty battle, it really was. And uh, they never really got on very well, did they? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Max Rosini and... Uh, and the, the, the president of Toulouse, of course, as we go, uh, getting the ball out. And there's a uh, great work from Etienne. That's a brilliant, brilliant five-pointer for Leo Barry. His first of the season for Stade Francais. Excellent work from that man as well, Lester Etienne. And Paris take a 5-0 lead. Well, that really escalated quickly, didn't it? They found space, Stade Francais, and it was Lester Etienne, just with a stutter step, got a little bit of space on the outside. A big handoff from Leo Barre. Excellent try from Stade Francais. They wouldn't have expected this. It looked a little bit innocuous at the start, even though there was plenty of running. They were reasonably well covered numbers-wise, but just that little half step on the outside from Etienne. Get his arms free, get the pass back inside to the support. Good running lines. And as you say, this, this animosity or this rivalry between the two teams, that's a great start for Stade Francais. I think, was it back in the day with Gazzini and... Uh, Rene Buscatel at the right. time. But, uh, yeah, look, and, and they've both got a, a, a fantastic history of excellence. So, you know, there, there's, I wouldn't say jealousy, but there's that, that kind of rivalry as well. A lot of titles between the two. Oh, just 35. 21 <laughs> for Toulouse and uh, 14 for Stade Francais. Uh, Joris Zikons, the former Aurillac player. Fifth season for Stade Francais, and he adds the extras. It's a 7 0 lead. And uh, appreciated by the likes of uh, that man there, of course. Just watching on it. Good scrum that set the platform here. And I was about to say that Brad Weber loves that sort of this sort of nature of a game, you know, a bit feisty, a bit broken play. He's perfect with that from his background with the Chiefs. La cage dedans. They 
go. Just uh, Stop blue. Stop. try and fool the uh, the Stadtsaluzan boys. Oh yeah, I'm going to pass it out to my uh, to my loose head prop, Abramishvili, and it goes back to Sigons. All of the tricks of the trade, whatever you can produce, as we see Briant being uh, kept up, kind of, in the sky as he is lifted up to take the high ball. It's been very good, Guillaume Cramon, since he's been given a lot of game time. Nicely done, Choco Barres again, the Argentinian. And uh, tackle without the ball, Cyril Bay just piercing the defence like an inside centre. Ball comes out, good work from Ruben, it's a centrist play, great passing. Big charge from Aki. They go again. Paul Graham, Spillage. Back to the high tackle, I think. We have to go back, way back. Well, that's a response from Toulouse that speaks of being stung by that early try from Stade Francais. They were immaculate throughout, put a lot of pressure on. It wasn't a wonderful clearing kick from Stade Francais, but excellent line out ball off the top. I think it was Rumart who took that. And that second phase, a little switch with Cyril Bai, who found a lot of space. Good acceleration up the middle. And Toulouse came surging forward into the Stade Francais territory. Here's the first run. They got through the first, not, they got half through that first line of defence, a one-on-one -on -one tackle, which is all you want. Here's the run from Bai. Tremendous. He might have had visions of going all the way. I think he had uh, the peripheral vision of a mantis shrimp there because he didn't see anybody going anywhere near him. Uh, as uh, we see Laurent Sempere, part of the French setup, uh, William Servat, La Bouche. Oh, they're all there, aren't they? Bai's eyes, I'm sure, would have lit up as they do when a, a tight forward sees a number 10 as the last line of defence. So, yeah, yeah, but a yeah. good tackle from Sigon. He's pulled it wide. His kicking game wasn't perfect last weekend. Made a couple of errors. Missed a pretty straightforward one, a little bit like that. Even closer, in fact, against Claremont. But uh, in any case, uh, Didier Lacroix. Not too concerned with 10 minutes in. He can uh, readjust. Uncharacteristic of Ramos. You wonder if maybe the intensity of the World Cup, just that drop in intensity is, has had a little effect there because it, he was fantastic for France with his kicking. Alexandre Rumat spinning into the hit by Hiri Goyen. Go, Jamal! Santi Choco Barres, wonderful footwork, big strong fella, isn't he? Uh, over six foot two. Cyril Bai, thought he was going to chip over the top then. We just don't know what's coming out of the, the top no, 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 draw. Like a little wizard, isn't he? Oh, he's been snagged, he's been snagged in a big way. Great charge there coming from Abraham Ishvili. It's the kind of filthy activity that he absolutely loves around the rock, isn't it? Neuf, jouez là. Ça, vous voulez une pénalité contre vous? Eh bien, alors arrêtez de compter. Plenty of time for conversation as uh, <laughs> as Gros trying to get the ball and uh, boxes it out. Uh, Lester Etienne, his ward, there's uh, his kick over the top. It's not a bad kick, a little bit too close to Ramos, who uh, fires one back. Still in play, seconds, full pace, full steam ahead. Leo Barry again. He's got a wonderful kick on him, isn't he, uh, Barry? Weber. Head first into traffic goes that man here we and the uh, Halif Finua joined from Grenoble watch out Lassie, Rumat's no. about no, no. he's got to let go yeah you got to you got to be careful with that he was, he was so close wasn't he? and uh, Alexander Rumat just not holding himself up and then afterwards I think he just he enabled the ball to be a little bit too, uh, you know, free for his teammates. Well, I think I think he did well at the start. I think he had the rights to the ball, and that's why the penalty didn't come there. But I think afterwards, it took a little bit too long for his support players to realise that they were in possession and they needed to get there to, to protect Rumar on the ground and then just holding on to it a little bit. But 
certainly good play at the start of that uh, of that breakdown or of that tackle. Got his hands very accurately on the ball early. Wasn't trying to uh, be cynical with just wrapping up the player on the ground, which I think happens too often. I think we need to reward the players who do target the ball as a genuine attempt to steal it. Tom Lombard in deep conversation up there. With his president, Hans-Peter Wild, uh, the Swiss millionaire, billionaire, don't know what he is, he's an heir. That's what he is. Seconds to try and make it double figures. Hits it so high, doesn't he? That looks absolutely wide. Just to the right, yeah, it did look good from that angle. He hits it very high. It's, it's, he's one of those kickers where you're just going, wow, okay, is that going to make it or not? Pierre Rabadan is the man there who's uh, working with the Paris Olympics, of course, and working with the man de Paris and uh, into politics now, but a former Stade Francais player, of course. Wonderful back rower. French international. No, no, yeah, sure. oh, it went backwards, not a problem. Picks up, yeah, good no, teamwork has yeah, been made available. That's an excellent work. Paul Grant getting the ball out into the hands. Placid and uh, Rumat. And uh, does get knocked forward. <laughs> They're going to claim that, that was, there was nothing wrong with that. As you see, the English centre marching. A bit more grappling. Okay. It is cold. Safety in numbers, maybe. Get warmed up, cuddling with one another. Here's this. <laughs> it's, I've seen that was called forward before, but again, Toulouse really working hard to try and get that ball into space. That was just the end of it. A couple of very nice touches early on, but that almost puts a bit more pressure on the subsequent passes to keep putting that ball into space when you've seen two or three earlier on come off and you know the whole team's yeah. desperate to get it out there. Very easy to keep pushing it too much. Love to recycle the ball as quickly as possible, don't they, uh, uh, Toulouse? And just uh, the broken play, passing the ball, you know, any which way but loose, just getting it to a player so that they can get that line moving and the, the, the uh, get the electrodes, you know, just uh, sparking and, and moving. Chucking the ball out wide, Cramon with the line out. They're under a little bit of pressure from the referee, Stade Francais. Cramon gets it back, a little motor there around the outside, arcing around the outside. Paul Grau into the hands of Flamon. Flamon taking it forward. And to lose. On the attack. Here he goes again, Cramon. Grau. Flam on this time. That from say fans making a little bit of noise here. Choco Barres beats his match in midfield. Over the top. Richie Arnold. They're just trying to smash a hole in this Stade Francais defence at the moment. It's not happening with the big boys. Great work by Briat. Come He's on, such a hard on. man. Anybody who's played oh, numerous seasons in Oriac has got to be a hard man. Great work. Holding the man up. Not allowing him to put his knees on the ground. Waiting for the cavalry. I mean, it's just pure strength, isn't it? Yeah, and he had some good help there from Gomez Corella, who came in just to, to keep holding that ball up, holding that uh, ball carrier up so that they couldn't get knee to ground. Great run right at the start. His Toulouse come around the back. Their timing is so good off the half back. This was another good tackle as well, I think, early on, because it did stop the movement from Toulouse. If that had gone to ground quickly, Toulouse was looking really dangerous. This was the end, perhaps a question mark over whether the knee did get to ground there. Yeah, but I think that Monsieur Trenini had made the call before that. It's already a more, yep. Gomez Cordella. Does it look 36, does he? Is he 36 or is he 38? I think he's... Uh, he's older. <laughs> he's 38, sorry. Seven seasons at Lyon. Looks like he's getting younger by the season. He's got that Benjamin Button sort of, you know, uh, scenario going on. Um, in any case, uh, fresh off the Rugby World Cup with Argentina. Um, Hard as nails, loves his rugby, continues to play. Spent a few seasons down in Biarritz, down at uh, Bordeaux as well. And, um, yeah, he's still going strong. And at that stage of the career, I think that the front rowers, they don't really need 
maybe all the scrummaging work that they, they used to when they first started as well. And it's a lot more about developing some of the younger guys. So perhaps during the week, as we see the, the first try from Stade Francais, perhaps during the week, some of the older props are managed a lot better these days, which True. may explain why they, uh, they arrived so fresh at the game. He started to make less errors yeah. when he came out of Bob Biritz when I was coming to him top 14. He was there about 10 years ago, and it was um, he was making quite a few errors, you know, he was like sort of, you know, reacting, he didn't have a good temperament, he was, you know, it was when scrums where you could get away with a lot more in scrums, right? Well now, you can see he's a lot more disciplined, and that's the reason why he's getting more caps playing for the Pumas, you know, Czech is saying, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put you in the team because I know that I can count on you, I think that looks like Makalu. And then Jeff. It's either it, he looks like Makalu or Arsene Lupin. I think um, I think as players get older, they get they do get more circumspect as well, and you're not out to try and beat everyone all the time, and you, you pick your battles a lot better and become a lot more judicious in uh, when you're trying to push things a little bit rather than doing it all the time. Whoever getting the ball out is Sigons with that giant hoofed kick of his, sends it way upfield. And uh, LaBelle not ready to take a quick line out. And they go up to the halfway line. He's got oh, such a oh, massive oh. hoof on him, isn't he? He's um, pretty impressive. Takes the ball up. into enemy territory from literally in his own 22. Yeah, just that 15 metre difference, 15 or 20 metres around what Toulouse have to do in their line out. It's a much different line out and a, and a platform set up for them in their own territory versus if they were at the 10 metre line of, of Stade Francais. So it is important. Cramon, good battle in the line out. It's a bit messy, and there's a little knock backwards there as Paul Grau couldn't scoop it up and do what he wanted with it. Retier takes over as number nine. Forwards with Aldegheri. Just outside there, 22. We know where this is going to go. It's uh, going to pop it up in the air. Lester Etienne. He's a big chunk of a human, isn't he? A wonderful uh, player during what is uh, sixth season uh, at Paris, having played at Massey beforehand. Segons, big high kick. LaBelle. Counter rucking galore. They did this before. Can they do it again? It's there for the taking. Well, no, the referee says stop. Get out of there, otherwise, uh, would have been looking for that. And Gomez Cordella, prime position to try and jackal. Oh, Richie Arnold throws the ball into the belly of Aldeguer. That's why he comes back quite far. Picked up. Oh, there's. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be. It's going to be a scrum for Stade Francais. Interesting thing about that period of play from Stade Francais. Brian Liebenberg there on the left. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And David Ca uh, De Carrier on the right. But uh, Stade Francais look like they've swapped their wingers across sides. You, you said Etienne, Lester Etienne took that first phase in coming off the right wing. He started on the left. That was where he was instrumental in that first try from Stade Francais. He's back there now. But it was noticeable that as the ball came across to the left, there was also Charles Lallois, who started off on the right wing, was, was across here on the left. So the wingers also mixing it up a little bit, depending on the role they're asked to play. Etienne, obviously, with, the, with the, a bit more gabarit, a bit more bulk, taking the ball in off the first phase, and it leaves Lallois free, this uh, promising young player, to, to look for a little more, more space. So, you know, you don't have to get stuck in your one position or your one area of the field that's the whole time. But that's good. I mean, you know, that's the modern coaching, yep. you know, uh, tactics, which uh, make complete and utter sense. I think he wants to reset that, Monsieur Trenini. Uh, but Charles Lenoir, he's only playing his fifth game in the top 14, comes straight through the Espoir system, of course, uh, Stade Francais, 19 years of age. Uh, he's a player that maybe you want to put him up against, uh, you know, someone a little bit more his size. Retier is a smaller player, whereas Tozan is a little bit chunkier. So um, in any case, you're trying to outfall everyone. It's a game of chess. And also, of course, across 80 minutes, particularly on the wing, when you when you are seeing, are eyeballing your direct opposite a lot, which is more than some other positions. You know, you can get used to what you need to do to counter them or to, to attack them. So just keeping keeping the players thinking, Nepal Alala sitting there, 
Uh, they're in the nice and warm. They've got two jackets on. Yeah. I don't know who he's borrowed the second one off, but uh, <laughs> got plenty of covering anyway, I would have thought. So <laughs> he'll be itching to get on at some point too. Brother of Casey Lolalo used to play for Racing. Here we go. This is a great opportunity. The offload here. Barry. Barry's off again. He's off again. Flying through the Toulouse defence. Ramos. He had the chance to take that. It's been knocked forward. Scrum stat front say. I thought Ramos was offside there. If that uh, if that ruck had been created over the top of the tackle, it'd be interesting to see where the two players connected or contacted one another above. But a great move to put Barry in space. He's had a great start to the game. Great talent. Just look at this. Well, first of all, inside pass, ghosts between two or three defenders, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good call. Yeah, it's, it's just a question of whether a ruck has been created. If there's contact above the ball, I think that's contact there. And I think Ramos has come from, from an offside position. Anyway, you push it as far as you can. The referee is the sole judge of fact. There he is, Rory Kakat. He'll be on sooner or later. Jeez, he's got a tracksuit collection, hasn't he? Oh, he has big time, hasn't he? Big scrum, this is. Big scrum, Stade Francais. Yeah. Watch out for Stade Francais with a massive shove here because they are fully capable of rattling this Toulouse pack. Good to see a big crowd at Jean Bois, and they've gone through the ups and downs. The uh, of, uh, of, of playing great rugby and then dropping down into the doldrums of the top catours. It's been a roller coaster ride for them. Big shove from Stade Francais. He gets it out, Rumat does really well. Aki, it's uh, the pass that's been picked up. Oh, it's off the shin. And that is a pretty ugly kick, isn't it, from, uh, <laughs> from LaBelle? Well, it doesn't really matter how, does it? It's the, it's the result that counts, and he's ended up getting a, a, you know, a good few metres. They're right up to halfway, but uh, I'm sure they would have liked that to stay in uh, to lose. Maybe even a little grubber kick might have been an option, but I think they all got a little bit thrown by the bounce pass that came out as they were trying to spread it. But that's to lose, looking to attack from everywhere, and sometimes the best position is deep in your own half when the opposition has to keep so many players from the back yep. line back to cover, that, uh, to cover that kick into the backfield. Wind blustering a little bit. Looks like it's supporting Toulouse a bit at the moment. It's been an icy wind today in Paris. Very chilly. Uh, Michele Valdi, the former Montpellier, the double throw has basically given the ball back to Toulouse. Little mistake there. But you don't call them little mistakes. You just call them mistakes or big mistakes. Cyril Bai uh, going on a little bit of a run once again. Grau gets the ball into the hands of Alban Placine. Aki, Tozan, goes on a wander, the former Mondo Massa man, Paul Grau once again. No way for Flamon, Cyril Bai, nicely done. Aki, a little bit sluggish there as he went into contact with Hiragoyen. 25 minutes in, Cyril Bai, loving the front up, frontal battle that's taking place between him and uh, Comis Gadala and Divaldi. Yeah, Richie. Richie Arnold. Nice, uh, nice run there, getting over the game line. This is uh, Ramos. Ramos loves this kind of play. Bouncing on Abramishvili. Rumat, got to be careful, Stad Francais there, uh, scrambling back into defensive positions. Big hit there on Cyril uh, on the uh, the front row, of course, uh, Aldegari. Aki. Placine. Grau. Big hit on Richie Arnold. Takes the hit, hits the ground. Just pegged back a little bit with Grau getting the ball to Retier. Artie Retier. Held up, that, that's not coming out. Oh, he did really well. A little bit lucky there, the ball was called. 
hit the deck quite quickly. Flamond as well, keep the ball alive. Ramos. Smashing hit coming in from Paul Gabriag. Not getting the ball out. Richie Arnold. Flam on it. Cyril Bai. Seconds deciding not to. Well, that's a uh, little bit messy, the support play. They're quite happy going through the middle, which um, is a little bit surprising for me. Maybe a couple of faces too much because now look at Stan Francais. Oh, it's a beautiful pass. Now Lester Etienne. If he can get past his man, he might be away. He's still going. Ramos doing really well. Brad Weber just off his. Did he put the ball down? Well, he's uh, made it available. Brad Weber just knocked off his feet. He's there for the taking. Alan uh, Fanoa and uh, very scrappy. This is turning into uh, a comedy of intrigue. Say errors really, but Tozan playing scrum half. Here's Labelle. Labelle getting the ball out. Watch out for Aki. Aki offload. Beautifully done. Takes that two defenders. Labelle again. Paul Grau. Grau running into a little bit of trouble. Richie Arnold with a bit of support. Cyril Bai. Is he going to go on a wonder once again? Oh, it's uh, Rumat. Retier. What do they do? Trying to wear down the Stade Francais defence until there's a the hole and the, there's a gap for them to run through. I don't know what they're trying to do. That was that was a little bit dangerous. Picked up once again. Paul Grau. The Jacklers are not around at the moment. Tozan charging straight into Brad Weber. Big long phase of play. This is for uh, Stade, Stade Toulouse. Guillaume Cramont. Grau. There's a gap and there's a place. I don't understand what was going on. That's a great opportunity. Paul Gaulle! Leo Barry would have been off. He would have been off in a big way. We're going to go back to the first oh, knock on Jeremy Ward as the player. Not uh, Leo Barry. He's slightly taller. An unbelievable phase of play that came to nothing. You can, I get the impression that the, there were tired legs out there in the midfield, but it's strange how Toulouse were just... It's just one way, one way, one way, non-multi-dimensional that we like to see, and no one wanted to kick. Well, I think it looks like they're trying to tie up. Uh, this is Ramos just taking Etienne finally and bringing him to ground uh, when the when the Stade Francais had their attacking patch. But Stade Francais, huge kudos to their defence because they've retained their discipline. Toulouse kept probing. They keep going the same way because they just want to end up exhausting the Stade Francais defence so they run out of numbers. So long as you can keep going forward, it's tough for the defence to fold round the corner going the same way. But if you can't keep going forward, then it makes it a bit easier for the defence, of course. But Stade Francais to, to play so many phases on defence and not give away a penalty and not give away a little half break to Toulouse. There were a couple of times it looked likely grow was certainly probing around the fringes as well. Had plenty of runners. Then he got his arms free one time as well, but Stud Francais' defence staying resolute. They would have had a second try if uh, the South African Jeremy Ward would have held on to that, going on a bursting run. Had the advantage, of course, but we'll go back. Scrum halfway line. Well, good opportunity, and this is where they, uh, they made big inroads just a few minutes ago through Barre when he ran off Brad Webber. So they're equally dangerous too, Stade Francais. They haven't strung the number of phases together that Toulouse have. They probably haven't had the position. But they're up 7-0. When they've got the ball, they're playing with confidence. They've got great attacking opportunities both sides of the scrum here. Brad Webber will react very quickly if the scrum does turn one way or the other to go with the turn. And he's, you know, with his acceleration as well, he's an extra attacking back always. So... They've got plenty of options up their sleeve now to really strike a blow against Toulouse, having, having seen Toulouse go through all the phases with, uh, with no reward. But they, they didn't, they clicked through all of the gears. I mean, you know, there was like, you know, a stop start, it was like kangaroo hops, but, uh, you know, you still know that they're super dangerous. But no one decided to kick. They were just keen to carry the ball and, and, and hit the defensive line a um, little bit. Uh, oh, you can't do that, I'm afraid. That's slightly illegal there. Should have thought about that, uh, Mathieu Rigoyen, 23-year-old. Ninth game, ninth straight game for Stade Francais, getting a, one of the most used players in this Stade Francais team. 
Yeah, well, the poor old back rowers, I mean, they're taught to just hunt the ball, aren't they? And, you know, he got himself here on the on the wrong side there. He's he's going to say, well, he wasn't a, 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 a ruck created there, so there's no offside line. But uh, I think it was fairly obvious he did have to come from a, a different position to go and get that ball. But you can see the thought process, you know. He's, he's just out there hunting a ball. The... the the structure's fallen apart. It's pretty much a free-for-all. Yeah. Why can't I have a go? Short line out. Nicely done. Cramon. Cramon running, running into Sigons. Hits the deck quite quickly. Paul Grau into Alexandra Rumat. Still going. So difficult to bring down. This is Cyril Bai. He's had a bit of a motor run earlier. Tries to go again. Cramon. Fearless. Competitive hooker. He just loves, loves the hits. And so I close this time and uh, Tozan, Tozan still going. Span out wide, good work. Rumat again, cram on. A little bit of support. This is this time from uh, Francois Cruz. Retier, Flamand. Richiano just behind there and Retier leaves it for Cyril Bai. Give it to the to the big boys who just absolutely love that. That's fantastic turnover. That is how he managed to get his hands on that. I really don't know. But that's that from saying possession. I want to know who's responsible for that because that was sensational. I think it was Pazenti. I want to know if it's legal. I had the arms, the arms just came over and just... I just grabbed the ball amongst the traffic. Real thief in the night, wasn't it? It was an elusive move, wasn't it? Not sure anyone's going to be sure of the legality of that. I mean, you're supposed to drive through a ruck, aren't you, to, to, to regain position or to turn over position, to drive right through so you go over the ball. But it's just reached over the top there. Well, it's like a, you know, it's like a, it's like grabbing a grabbing a spoon from, you know, from the drawer when your mum's doing a cooking and sort of, you know, just popping it in and while she's not looking and it was and taking a taste. It was pretty impressive, wasn't it? It was Abramishvili in the end who got his hands on the ball first and the ball bobbled around. Referee said he had rights, so well played. But he doesn't have long tentacles either. <laughs> Love it. All legs, <laughs> importantly. <laughs> Here we go, cram on into traffic. The big charge from the big hooker. Go using the, the locks this time. It's flam on, flam on, brought down. Needs to get out of there. Stade Francais hitter. Uh, here we go in, I think. Cyril Bai. More combat, more battles. The legs is a good move there from Abarishvili. Grau inside pass, just a little drop pass off the right shoulder. And this time it's Retier who gets caught out. Oh, the attempted rip, but they rip the ball. A little bit nearly a turnover there, inside pass again. It's funny how these forwards from Toulouse are. Uh, this is more like uh, Ajan from 1990, isn't it? Here we go, ball coming out this time, Toulouse. With Matisse Lebel gets past one player. Well, there's a big clear out and the, the ball gets knocked forward. Stad Francais in possession. Good ball into the hands of uh, that man, Barry. Who I mistook for uh, Jeremy Ward once again. Get it right before the end of the game, or the end of the half. Stad Francais on the charge. Now, let's see where the defence is. Are they scrambling back into position or... They'll be okay now. And Weber will want to get rid of this. Five minutes and a bit to go before the end of the first half. And uh, all of the players able to breathe for a moment. Not out of danger yet, start Francais, but the, the crowd, quite often you can get a crowd more infused with defensive efforts. You know, when you're under pressure, they see you right on your line getting up and making tackles and eventually get a turnover and clear the ball, even if it's 15, 20 metres like this. Yeah. The roar that a home crowd will give you for, for having... So, I mean, I didn't, wasn't involved in the tackles myself. I watched a lot of teammates <laughs> making them. I was waiting for the turnover and try and kick it 15 metres. But it really does lift a crowd, just those defensive moments, and particularly when you're up against a team with the attacking prowess and, and reputation of Toulouse. Off the top by Placine Ramos. That's a little bit forward as far as I was concerned. Uh, great work at the breakdown. That's a brilliant turnover. Look at that from Tanganoa Hale Fenoa, the Tongan back rower. Just his sixth game. The former Grenoble brilliant play. 
Yeah, timing was absolutely perfect here. A good pass, getting out quickly into the midfield, but almost too good to lose there. They almost got too much ground, and that opened the opportunity for Halai Whanua to get over that ball, and get over he did. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you can't do that, but uh, the idea was good. If you're going to do it, sometimes you just got to think, i got to jump up in the air at the right time and then flick it back, but not do... Look, you gotta, I think you've got to. I think you've got to take it. You got to take a bit of a run up and jump uh, and jump a lot earlier than that. Was that Ed Harris looking on from in the stands? Fantastic! Everybody's in town. Zach Henry, there he is. Top scorer for Stade Francais. Oh, has uh, got a. A blood replacement, I think. And it's uh, Gelon coming on for Francois Cross. It's not a bad, uh, bad guy to come on to plug in for, for 10 minutes. It did occur to me that, you know, as this game wears on and the bench comes more into play, it is a very, very strong bench for Toulouse. Obviously, we talk about Dupont. But when you look at the likes of Malvaka and uh, Miafu, as well as Geelong, who's just come on, it's uh, it's pretty heavy cavalry. Did you just um, pronounce Miafu in the French way? Well, he's French now, isn't he? You can. That's what I was getting to, anyway. Uh, big charge. Whoa, here it goes. Bumps off Geelong. Geelong's as hard as nails. Loves the combat. That's a wild ball out wide. That's the original Rouge, isn't it? The original makeup. There we go. Days gone by, use a bit of blood, blush the cheeks. So, this is where, look where um, Rumat is. It's, it's not the jump, it's when he's actually coming down to the ground. He just comes around the side and doesn't go through the front door. That's the, the call by Monsieur Trainini. Everybody's got a little bit of blood smeared on their face. It's. Um, I think we saw it there. A couple of forearms looked like that, that cut. I'm not sure how. Maybe. Last 10 minutes, 80 to 20. Stade Francais will enjoy this little moment. Karim Gazal. And Laurent. Will I beat there? Sorry, Sigons. Missed his last one. Will we get double figures before half time? From Stade Francais. It's pulled it wide. Oh, that might have gone. There you go. I'm sure it's gone. It's um, perfect there for a second. He hits it so high, it's deceivingly tricky yes. to uh, to call it or not. That, on that gone right over the flag. I think, uh, well, it was inside the flag. I think by the time it had gone through and looked like it was going straight in line with the post, it was well past the post. So, yeah, good strike. Ramos, nicely taken there. The Roman Briat. Plassi until to get out of there. Explanation from Monsieur Trenini. So Cramont did really well there because he was all over Briat, preventing him from releasing the ball. I think Rumat was also uh, playing his part. In fact, there weren't many players who weren't playing their role in that, but uh, just stopping the ball from coming out. And uh, it's a turnover ball, of course, so Stade Francais lose possession to lose scrum. It's a great attacking weapon, the line-out drive, if it's, if it's done well, because if you can get to the ball to the back and the ball's away from danger, it can't get locked in there, it can't get stolen, and ripped out by, by an opposition player. It is very, very hard to defend. So, you know, the only way to, to effectively defend it, you've got to operate as a, as a pack. You can't operate individually. And so they've done really well there, going and patting one another on the back, obviously, the Toulouse players, for uh, a collective effort well, uh, well executed. Well, uh, Emile and Tana Tamak and, uh, and, his, uh, and his wife will have a, a full... A full house for the uh, for the Christmas dinner anyway with the, the two sons who are both uh, sidelined injured injured of course uh, Roman and Tio won't be travelling around Christmas time during the the top 14. 
Ramos gets the ball out. Here's uh, Matisse Labelle. Labelle, Labelle still going. Drops it into the hands of Retier. Oh, beautiful. Pass back into the hands of the Toulouse fullback. And Labelle makes it two tries this season. And a beautiful, sneaky play down the left side. Working so well with Artie Retier. Well, just when you thought Toulouse was really struggling phase after phase to break through, they pull a set phase move like this. It ended up the crucial moment being that fend off from LaBelle, and he was able to keep his feet, stay in support. Scintillating try from the Toulousain. Beautiful timing of the pass. I'm sure what they're checking. Uh, he's looking for obstruction uh, and uh, uh, just getting in the way of Jeremy Ward. So we're going to see if the uh, the inside centre was blocked. Well, I've used Peter Aki. Sorry, Peter Aki. Um, Toulouse have used Aki in, a, in, a, in a, a sort of a trucking it up roll. They changed it here. It's Choco Barres who gets in the way of Ward, in fact. Yeah, look, you've got to be careful that you don't contact in a way that, that, that puts the player out of an opportunity to, to cover defend. You know, and there's a possibility. And he takes out a player. Yeah, there's a possibility that Ward would have got across there to yeah. cover. So. No try. There's a penalty, but uh, we're going to go back to a penalty um, committed by Sergei Abramishvili. Well, that's a real shame because it was a beautiful move from Toulouse. As I said, having used Aki up the middle this time they used him as a decoy flipped the ball on they sent it wide and really good play from LaBelle getting the ball out one wider out to Etier and then staying in support you know beautiful try and it all amounts to nothing unfortunately and uh, well they decide to kick for the corner they're not going for the three points they haven't got any points on the scoreboard just yet but uh, let's have a look at this again here it is here and, and, and part of it is because Chocobares takes the line a little bit angling outwards. He's, he's made that in, inside la, running angle and then he's veered outside and that's what took out Ward and made Ward unavailable to get across and cover defence. Cramon into the hands of Richie Arnold and uh, the back of this driving ball, Cramon picks it up once again. He's got Paul Grau who looks left and uh, waits patiently until he says, right, it's for me, let's get it out. And they've got caught, they're stuck, there's no penalty against Toulouse, but they're still going forward. Great work there from Cramon, finally hits the deck. Big charge, they got the advantage, it was a collapsed. And uh, there's no advantage. It's another penalty. Whoa. Cramon's got... He's got ants in his shoes, isn't he? He's all over the place, loving it. Well, they're all probably feeling a little bit of pressure, a little bit of anxiety to lose. It's very rare that this team goes 40 minutes without scoring any points. True. And they've had plenty of ball, they've had plenty of play. They're not even going to waste, not waste time, but they're not even going to take the time to have a scrum. Paul Grau gets the ball out. It's been uh, picked up there. Low tackle there coming up from Hirigoyen on, on, on by Gelon. Gelon trying to make inroads. Paul Grau, there's an offside call surely from the referee. No. Is uh, okay. Paul Grau gets the ball out. It's Alban Placine still going forward, meter two meters out. Uh, Grau into the hands this time. Gelon, Gelon. He meets his match with Roman Briat. Grau into the hands of uh, Rumat. They go out. They're going to use the backs this time. Running into trouble. They've been hit back. Paul Grau using uh, Alexandre Rumat. Still going. Mows down. Paul Gabriag, no. nearly two minutes into uh, added time after the 40. Richie Arnold this time knocked off his feet. Paul Grau tries to go himself. Oh, he gets absolutely smashed to the ground. It's another penalty flying off your feet. So that was uh, Halle Fanoa. And uh, they might lose a player if they're, uh, unless they're very lucky. Ball comes out, picks up. Well, it's, uh, we're going to go back to the penalty. Mr. Trenini might give a last warning to the Stade Francais team. I think it will be. I think there's been enough variety in the penalties that he's blown, whether it's offside or coming over the top for him to find it difficult to, to reach for the card now. But I think you're right, Robbie, one more this close to the line and somebody's, somebody's going for a break. For me, the 
placage, il est au niveau des ballons. Si jamais il y a une image contraire, vous savez qu'on le vérifie. Vous savez qu'on le vérifie. It's been pretty good refereeing in this first half. I know both teams come in with the attitude to move it, and, and each time there's been a knock-on, he's been able to play advantage, and the, the team getting possession has looked to use it, which, you know, effectively wipes out the, the advantage. So, but I think it's been well adjudicated in this first 40. Cram on tap, goes charging, goes underneath, unable to borrow his way through. Paul Gratistan, Cyril by Cyril by tries to get closer. He's a metre and a half out. Paul Grau into the hands of Plassin. Plassin picked up and uh, manhandled, smashed down to the ground. They go back out once again. Peter Aki, straight forward, straight through the middle. Hands, oh, it's Brad Weber. I thought he uh, got his hands on it. Stad Francais have snatched it. And it's a turnover ball that is pretty impressive. Excellent play there from the from the hooker, Mikhail Evaldi, and it's been kicked down. Look at that for a result. Well, that ball got grappled at by two or three hands, and it turned into a spinning top, and it spun over the side of Stade Francais, so a little bit of luck there, but they've really been staunch in defence, Stade Francais. And uh, no points on the scoreboard for Toulouse at half-time, and uh, Lauren Labitte watches on and tries to uh, understand exactly what's happening here. Because it's a, it's a very sturdy first half performance defensively. Uh, they got one try, one penalty, but just look at that. Spins out, as you said. And there it is. Please help yourself. Well, this is very, very rare for Toulouse to have had so much ball. Yeah. We haven't conceded any points. Big, strong defensive performance in the second half. <laughs> he's gone, he's gone. And uh, I don't think we're going to get a, a Toulouse player either because they've just gone straight back in. Of course, they don't want to talk. They're trying to understand exactly what Mr. Trenini is doing um, in terms of his interpretation. Um, but the ball span out. You called it. It was a good call, Mitz. Uh, Barry with a try. Not pushing it too much and getting, you know, really focused on the scoreboard and the result rather than the process. And so I'm sure part of the message has been just stay stay composed, keep going through, and, and things will come rather than try to push things too much. But it's one thing to say that. It's another thing out on the field when you're getting harassed by a, a really physical defence to, to keep that composure. Start front, they'll be trying to get hold of the ball. It'd be a bit of a luxury for them to have even 50-50 possession. Yeah, they haven't had much uh, possession out of the... Uh, 60, 35% possession in the first half. Uh, taken out of the sky, Halle Fenua is the man who takes it out of the 22. Weber, bit of a low pass, picked up there by Gabriag, brought down by Richie Arnold. Uh, Weber just trying to organise the boys at the back. He wants a little bit of protection. This will be uh, thumped out. right on the 22 but it uh, it was inside according to the referee may not be long before we see this man yeah got a couple of sevens competitions coming up pretty soon there's uh, uh, Francois Cross he's not coming back on he, he goes into every challenge head first of course you know hard as nails Francois Cross the uh, made in Toulouse back rower and uh, he doesn't look too happy. Ball's been ripped out of the hands and uh, cram on it. Oof. Thrown back down to the ground by Hirigoyen. Little bit of space if they can get it. Oh, it's, uh, he tried to get his hands on it. What's the referee going to say? It's just a knock on by uh, that man Etienne rather than anything else. Or oh. change it to a penalty. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a verbal backlash. I don't know. In any case, we just. Uh, Get on with it. Taken very quickly. Labelle. More possession for Toulouse. More defensive work for uh, Stade Francais. That's been stolen. That's, well, nearly stolen. Oh, it has been stolen. Ripped out. Brad Weber kicks the ball down into Toulouse territory. Anybody chasing? Well, Ramos uh, has the ball. Bounce kindly for him, and that's a pretty decent clearance kick, but under a little bit of pressure. So I wonder if it uh, went through Brad Weber's head quickly that he was in a position for a 50-22. Very easy to say that, sitting here in comfort. The changes start to be rung already, two minutes into the second half, and 
Weber himself right, hitting off. I think Weber's got a bit of a, he's hobbling a little bit, isn't he? I think he got hit quite hard and um, just uh, suffering marginally. Rory Kokot comes on. <laughs> he's still going, isn't he? Uh, he was only meant to be a Rugby World Cup. Well, oh, that's a knock on that is. And uh, first. It's not a great error. welcome for a halfback. That's sort it's of a good. ball from the line out. <laughs> not good. At least he can see the funny side. After a career that he's had, I think he can see the funny side in most things. 36 years of age. As I said uh, earlier, Antoine Dupont played under him, the tutorage, and then afterwards he got his uh, first outing as a pro at Castor Olympic. No, that's not the ball you want. They, they had every opportunity. Again, easy for us sitting here to say that, but every opportunity to take that a bit more cleanly than just batting it away with your outside hand. Played at the Rugby World Cup, playing for France back in 2015. Born in South Africa. Here we go. Problem with the timing in the, in the, the front row, just pushing a little bit too prematurely. And Dorian Altigari's been pinged for that. Goes high. Taken quickly by Gelon, Paul Grau. Retier. It's opened up a little bit. Oh, it's a little bit of a fumble there by Choco Barres. Picked up by Marchin. Goes back an opportunity. This is that's a good pass. That's a very good pass indeed. And it opens up a little bit down the right hand side. Smashed down, hit hard, Charles Lelois. The teenager gets battered by two players. Here we go in. Rumat trying to get his hands on that. Cocotte goes blindside, nice hands. Good pass from Briat. Bit of possession for, for Stade Francais. Rory Cocotte decides to go himself. I think that's what he brings to the game, just around the fringes, loves to go on a little bit of a one. He's still got a bit of zip about him as well, Rory Kokoc. Stade Francais. Oh, he nearly, nearly managed to find a little path through the black wall of this uh, Toulouse defence. Abramashvili, five minutes in. Uh, inside pass, not a bad one as well. Cocotte goes again. Gabriel uh, Pesenti smashing into the Toulouse defence. What options are they going to use? Gabriel still making inroads, just keeping the ball nice and warm until Gelon gets his hands on the ball. No. Nope. There's an offside call by Mr. Trainini. Good work from uh, from Gelon. He was that was a that was a legal uh, attempt at uh, jackling the ball as we see Dupont, his former Osh teammate, coming into uh, the fold. Now he'll replace Paul Grau at nine logically. Well, Grau's actually been pretty good. There's nothing more he could have done to to try and spark this Toulouse attack. They're almost more comfortable at the moment on defence to lose, really making some, some good hits. That could have, it, it, it was a beautiful pass from Riyat, and you knew what he was trying to do, get the ball out. It could have, could have done with him holding on and maybe going a little bit more, trying to commit that defender. It was a two-on-one, but I think bringing on Dupont now is more about how it lifts the energy of the other players around him because it really feels like Stade Francais has got the momentum, does have sort of the, the bit between their teeth or... Uh, dominating a little bit the tempo of this game. So trying to arrest that as quickly as possible is the reason for Dupont, rather than a lack of confidence in Grau. I think Manny Mirfu's going to come on as well. So uh, a double dose of confidence uh, for this Stade Toulouse team. I'm saying that, they've just gone down another three points, 13-0. Tails up for the Stade Francais team. And there he is, Antoine Dupont. Be heading off to Vancouver and uh, and LA soon with the sevens team. Well, that's maybe why we're not seeing him play full matches. Of course, the, the fitness requirements shorter and sharper, more intense, and so maybe we'll see a lot more of this where he only plays maybe 30 minutes or so in the 15s game. 
former New South Wales Eagles player, Manny Mirfu. Briat. Perfects in the air. Counter rocking galore here from Stade Toulousain. Flamand makes way for Mirfu. Now Toulouse on the attack. A good opportunity for them to do something. Ramos. Oh, he's just been isolated a little bit. That's uh, the foot's out. The referee, the linesman's flag is raised. Great tackle. Really good tackle that was. Because he basically snuffed out any chance of uh, getting the ball anywhere. And that was a very strong piece of play, that was. Well, you said it, Robbie. Good opportunity as we see a little bit of grappling again in the background. It's getting to know one another. These forwards are a pretty sociable bunch. But here in the foreground was Stade, uh, Stade Toulouse trying to do something, but doing that wasn't the right one. Throwing a massive wide pass, as good a pass as it was, a prolific pass, but it just gave the defence time to just run out and make that hit. Line out. Briat off the top. Oh, oh, he's made the break. Jeremy Wall, the South African, looks left, looks right. Where's he going to go? Still going. Brought down. It's been made available. Rory Kukok gets the ball out. That's nicely done. Good support play. Abram Asfali, the, uh, the Georgian loose set. Got to let go of that. Seven metres, seven, uh, yeah, about seven metres out. And then another charge, Stad Francais in possession. Got to release that now. Kokot. There it is, and that is a great score there. Charles Lavoie, his first ever try as a professional player at the age of 19. All smiles, big score, and Charles Lavoie makes his own rules out here for Stade Francais. What? First try for Stade Francais. An absolute lethal finish from Stade Francais after what was a cracking break. Another back move that put Jeremy Ward in space. Toulouse, not sure how this can happen from 50 metres out, but there goes Ward just on the outside of Chocobares. Thought he'd taken the wrong option there. I thought this was the wrong option too, going back to the right-hand side, but look at these front rowers. Three to one, tight head to loose head. On it goes. They had a little bit of a struggle there to maintain position, but here's a bit of a shovel out here to Lalois and good finish there. Exciting moment for the young man. And an exciting moment for the team as well as they extend their lead possibly to 20 points when the kick comes. Pardon? Okay. okay. How high do you want to go? <laughs> Wow. Flags are up. 20-0 lead. This is uh, an ugly scoreline, isn't it, for Stade Toulouse? What a magnificent kick it was, but also a very, very good ball. A couple of options that they missed out there. The big, long pass out to Ward. Found himself just side-slipped a little bit to get outside of the defenders. That's the end of it there, but there was a beautiful passage in there as well with the, the two front rowers running onto the ball with gusto. When Jeremy Ward starts to get his wings out, he really can fly, and he's a deceiving player. This is another wonderful break. And look at this, Roman Briat saying, I'm not Jeremy Ward, and I'm not Lelouis, but I'll go on a bit of a wander and wait for the cavalry to arrive. Here we go, Rory Kakot once again. Where's this going to go? Not a great pass. Does well enough, though. Give it to the front rowers. They've been playing like centers in the past uh, few minutes. Can't put your hands on the ball when you're on the ground. Oh. That's a little, little bit of a high hit there in the ruck, and uh, it was uh, reversed, so... It was a great steal off the kickoff. Rumar came through, perfect little kick from Ramos. Rumar angling in into space. There's no time for Stade Francais there to get a pod across to, to get up and win that ball in the air. There's the kickoff here, but then suddenly it got stripped and Briat turns up with it. Realises pretty quickly he'd found some quicksand. I know what that's like. <laughs> Intercepts at a late stage of your career. And he did pretty well here. He just wants to he wants to retain possession. As you said, wait, wait for the cavalry. 
Barassi coming on for Aki. I think it must have been the clean out, was it, off that subsequent phase yep. where Stade Francais just around the neck. Perfectly taken. Rumat, wonderful in the air. Always has been. Gelon's got the ball in his hand. He's still going. Oh, he's left it for Movaka. Movaka. Here he is, Roderick Netty. Netty. Netty close to the line, being held up by Ward. They're looking at the referee. They've got to let go of the tackle player. That's the call. Otherwise, he will get penalised. Yeah, they got the advantage here. That's a good, good flat pass, isn't it? Miyafu unable to take it over. Antoine Dupont. He's got an option here. Oh, that's a beautiful pass. Choco is unable to just carry it through. Dupont once again. Ramos, this is surely going to go over. Easily done. And it is Matisse Labelle. And finally, they get five points. They get points on the scoreboard. Labelle out wide. Unmarked and challenged. 20 points to five. Toulouse get their first points. Extraordinary, 52 minutes into a game and with a surfeit of possession for Toulouse, finally they get across the line. An easy waltz over in the corner for LaBelle after having had a try negated in that first half. But uh, finally they're on the board and on their way back potentially. And again, it's a miss from Ramos. And, uh, well, there's something happening. Might have to change his boots or something. But uh, look at this from uh, from Rodrigue Natty barreling through. He had to release the player. Dupont gets it out. Ramos over the top. You can see that they're queuing up. There's no one out there, is there, to challenge them? Not from that distance. No one's going to stop him. Now, good play early from the forwards. Moving the ball into those big bodies surging forward. I think Netty thought... He was going to be over. His eyes lit up as he saw that line approaching like a big steak. Big French steak. Might be vegan. Oh. So apologies. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh, Antoine Dupont under a little bit of pressure? But of course, Dupont knows everything <laughs> about pressure. As cool as you like. Not a great kick, though. He'll be a little bit. Oh, it got taken back in, I think. It got taken back in. And so. Straight out is not there. It is that's Miafu off his shoulder. It's a very good call there from the uh, from the referee. To be fair, a bit unlucky. He may not have been thinking of that. It's unusual for Dupont because he's very, very aware of everything, of space and players where they are and everything like that. Just on that occasion, he's fallen foul of a little technicality. Can be forgiven for that. It's not often he makes a mistake. But it puts Stade Francais in a very good attacking position with a, a, a line out five metres out. Michele Valdi. But he's glad that he's not with playing for Montpellier anymore. Going through a torrid time down in Occitania. Lots of players getting in the way. Richie Arnold's one of them. It's gone down. Well, the counter rucking has made it very complicated. I think they've managed to get the ball back. Look at that. Great counter-rucking from Stade Toulouse. And the moment it was collapsed, they just realised that there weren't too many players protecting the ball, and it was a good chance to just drive through. Yeah, identification and communication comes into that as well, when you, because you need all hands to the pump, really. They looked not bad at the start there, Stade Francais, as they wheeled it around. Big Richie Arnold in there making a nuisance of himself, exactly what you want and you need. But he does need his teammates to come around because his weight wasn't really in behind it either. While he's trying to get in and muck their ball up with his arms, he needs his teammates to get around quickly, and they did so. But he's got, he does have the advantage of having a, a wingspan like, a, like an Atlantic albatross, so it does help. The turnovers in this game have been really, really significant, whether it's been knock-ons at crucial moments. The Rucks, five lost Rucks, four to lose. Just 
that turnover, as you mentioned, is just something that you can't afford to lose. And that'll be something that they'll analyze and say, you know, how do we lose those rucks? You know, what was happening there? Why didn't we protect it? Where were, you, where were the players that were meant to be there? Analytics key in the professional game. Stade Francais mipped by the fact that they didn't get a penalty for that. Yeah, look, there'll always be a reason why, you, why you've lost the ball in a ruck. You know, not having support there early or, or a run that's gone too well and gone too far and got away, got isolated away from support. But also at times you do have to applaud really good play. And, you know, sometimes after multiple phases, a team on defence just happens to get the right number of players near the ball. And if they've got good communication and good reaction and then good execution, it's pretty hard not to concede that turnover, you know. So it is a good positive part of the game. You know, I think it's good for the game. I don't like seeing turnovers all the time and willy-nilly and penalties going for the defensive team all the time. But it seems that there have been big swings in possession this game and it's exciting for the spectators. That's a little bit more like it for Stade Francais. Big success there. Uh, big pats on the back of the head for Francisco Gomez Cudela because uh, he put in a pretty good shift on that emo on, in, that, in that scrum. Well, that could be one of the big turning points of the game. It sounds ridiculous saying a turning point at 15 points difference in Stade Francais' favour, but you know, Toulouse wins that ball and exit. We know they can score points from anywhere. Suddenly turning that round, the lift that it gives to the forward pack for starters, but secondly, just on the scoreboard, the chance now to go to 23-5, 18 points ahead. It takes a bit more wind, perhaps, out of Toulouse's sails. That's a huge scrum. And Halai Fonua showing the delight that the entire Ford pack will be sharing. Segun, ready to take that 60 degree wedge to the ball. I don't know what he's going to try and do here this time. He's got a strong boot. Like, it's not like he's, he, he goes short or it just goes high. And that, I'm sure that's gone over. <laughs> no, on this occasion, no. I mean, that, yeah, you see the. the it flight could conceivably path. have, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Got a change. And uh, Stade Francais, I think, are making change. Baptiste Pazent, he's going off. Azagou is coming on. Nice, nicely taken by Etienne. Haven't seen too much of him with ball in hand in the second half. Valdi. Nicely done, great passing. Great passing there by Stade Francais. Ball's been made available. The counter rucking from Toulouse has been sensational. Look at that. I think that they've got it. That's going to be a turnover ball, surely. Well, Cocotte somehow gets his hands on it. And there's the uh, the kick over the top. It's a cheeky little kick. A little bit of pressure on, Matt, on uh, Ramos. And he decides to uh, ground the ball, not taking any risks. I think they were a bit lucky, Stade Francais, there to hold that ball. That was a good counter ruck from Toulouse, trying to get one back. We Stade Francais have done that several times tonight, but then the Stade Francais forwards just sort of flopped around the side there, managed to seal it off, and the ball came back to them. I, I think Toulouse a little bit hard done by there. Going to go for distance down the, down the right side rather than shortish down the left. Drop goal opportunity. That is wide, but it's still... Well, he's fully capable of that, isn't he, uh, Barry? I think he is wind-assisted slightly there as well. Ahead the distance. The bell. Uh, Tozan trying to get his hands on it. Lester Etienne, really strong take and carry. Well, Movaka just putting his hands down on the ground and holding up his body weight just for a split second. It's a big call, isn't it? 
Well, he's come on. He wants to make a difference, obviously. He's had a hell of a last two or three months. Piazza Malvaca might have been from that clean out at the end. That would have been a penalty as well, even if they hadn't earned the penalty from Malvaca. They came through and cleaned out the halfback, which you're not allowed to do. Protected species back there. <laughs> it's true, no, but so they should be. They're not. They're not part of the ruck. They're not going in there to be combative at the ruck. So, um, Cocotte got taken out. But uh, another chance to just chip away with three points, and they'll be. Even though they missed the last one, they'll be happy to just keep doing this and stay down the the, the right end. Start from say, not to mean, not to say that they'll shut up shop. They've got to keep playing and keep swinging. But all those three points are going to keep adding up. And it's also clock watching as well. You know, use the clock to your advantage. We've got less than 20 to go. Segons. Goes he, wide. He's missed left a lot tonight, so he aimed right. Plus, he's got the wind beside, which brings it a little bit right to left from where he was looking. But... Uh, very little enthusiasm from the crowd as soon as he hit it, so it was never a chance. He's a, he's a bit lucky because Ramos is missing. Uh, he hasn't got his kicking boots on tonight either, so missed five so far. A couple of big hits there coming in. Plassin Cramon just bringing down Lester uh, Etienne. 27 year old player from the Paris suburbs. Cocotte. It's inside of the 22, marks being made. LaBelle. Where's he going? Where's he off to? Oh, he's seen a little bit of a gap here. Needs a little bit of support. Cocotte. Needed a few more players. They get the ball, quick ball out. David Anu gets the ball out. Oh, it's been chucked in. Little dangerous bit of play there. Is, it's a chance. This is a good opportunity, but the ball got knocked forward. He's super dangerous, Joe Marchant, but um, on that occasion, we have to go back to the knock-on. Well, he was so close to getting through, LaBelle. Initially, it looked like, gee, he might have got himself in trouble when he took that quick tap. But I think they came back the wrong way. They made a good fist of it to lose. And Dupong, obviously, very aware of where the opportunities are when it did come back. But I think that needed to keep going the same way, keep coming left after LaBelle made his run. I'm so surprised just how much they haven't kicked tonight. You know, the likes of, of, of Ramos um, or LaBelle. You know, just a little chip, the grubbers, the little chips over the top, anything. There's been nothing from Toulouse, whereas normally they just add that extra element to their game so that they can, you know, just put the defence on the back foot, shake them up, because Stade Francais have just been holding. They've been holding really well, but they haven't been forced to turn around, backtrack into gaps, into pockets of space where they have to, like, sort of, you know, f f when they get themselves under pressure. Correct. They haven't been made to consider it as a defensive line. And we saw early on, Stade Francais did it just once. Leo Barre, early on in the game, a little chip and chase. He get, regained position yep. straight away, and it's just enough to, to make that defence, the, the, the defensive line, consider it. But that's part of the legacy, I guess, of having been so successful throughout history to lose with the moving the ball, the jeu de continuité, the jeu de mouvement, oh, keeping va, the ball in play. <laughs> Heard a couple of words now. <laughs> I don't want to bring most of I don't want to bring most of my French vocab to the commentary at all. I tell you, <laughs> get fired pretty quickly. Steak free. To... No, I'm not going to go that. Oh, what are you saying? <laughs> Right. Dupont. Oh, it's a little bit messy, that was. And uh, Stade Francais have been pinged for angling in. And it's going to be a, a Toulouse penalty here. They don't mind, though. They don't mind, I don't think, Stade Francais. They're putting pressure on that Toulouse scrum. Toulouse know when they go into a scrum, they're not going to get easy possession. And even there, conceding a few more metres and, and the line out, OK, not ideal, but they'll be happy with how they're disrupting the scrum start Francais and not making it easy for Antoine Dupont to get quality ball at the back to, to dictate terms. Gomola. He knows that, well, 15 points. Still plenty of time. 
Movaka. Movaka Stade Francais, they win the ball. And uh, excellent work with Gabriag. Stade Francais, Capitaine, smuggling and poaching the ball away from that Toulouse line out. Here is Tozan. Tozan scored a brace last weekend. He's just run into the jaws of this Stade Francais team. The Classicos are in there. That's not coming out. That's a courageous run from Tozan. However, he's got those big boys there. Their presence of mind was fantastic. The Stade Francais defenders, they kept them up right from the start. No chance of that knee finding grass. Kept him right up, more was called, and of course then it's Toulouse's responsibility to make sure the ball comes out, and they couldn't do that. Good win as well for the Stade Francais line out. Just look how many players are around. The running line is wrong, right? The moment that you see like sort of, you know, four or five Stade Francais players all in the same spot, they're gonna swarm you. They're gonna, they're gonna make your life a misery, basically. Oh, JJ Van der, Van der Mest, he's um, quite a large specimen, isn't he? Coming on for uh, Gabriag. He's it's odd one for, player odd. who just want to avoid at all costs. Odd for a South <laughs> African, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Big, strong, heavy body. I know, but he, he, you don't want to, you know, Tozan will... <laughs> he'd rather go into five Stade Francais players when he's not part of the five than just running towards him. But you can see what Tozan was thinking. He wanted to get some forward momentum. He wanted to get as up as close to his support players as he could to give them a bit of an easy, easy one to get back and around, support and, and, and move to the next phase. Is that what you think? Well, look, and, 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 and he committed himself to it 100%, and pretty hard to pull out, I guess, once you've done that. But uh, he just, you know, found guys with the bulk and with the, the nous and the ability to, to keep him held up. Cockot off the back, here we go. This is a, Oh, the ball doesn't go through, but it's still Stade Francais who pick it up. It's Segons who's uh, tossed back by Ramos. This is uh, Leo Barry getting the ball out. Lester Etienne can't really see too many options. Little uh, pirouette into the defence sometimes works. He sucked in a few players, there's no doubt about it. Got to watch out, you've got the Jacklers, especially Mirfu. That's a kick, it's not a great kick from Cockot. <whistles> Offside position. Barely even a mediocre kick. A little bit of an odd decision there. They had a, had a bit of go forward there. They'd found some space as well. He'd done very well, Lester Etienne. Get in and, as you say, pirouette. But Toulouse will still fancy their chances. They've come back. They were even at home against Union Bordeaux Berg, 72nd minute. The turnaround began. You know, Toulouse can just, uh, you know, when they want to come alive, all they do is that feed off that positivity. The moment that they get themselves, you know, a five points at, they're saying, OK, guys, we can do this. And, you know, that's what Toulouse are all about. They know how to wrap up games. They know how to finish contracts. And they know how to, uh, uh, you know, score points in the last few minutes, regardless of, the, you know, what time you've got on the clock. Batty Germain comes on. Wonderful moustache, still sporting that, even though it's December. We'll forgive him. Retier. Will we? <laughs> well, well, well on, on air we will. It's for charity. Good on him. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Morgan Parrott watches on it. Flamon replaces Arnold. Arnold goes off. Flamon went off earlier, of course. Mirfu came on to replace him. You're Vandermished. Beasting his way through that. That you're right, Robbie, they can score points on their ear to lose. And, you know, these days particularly, I think there was a, a famous Super Rugby game a few years ago where the Highlanders playing in South Africa, I think, scored three converted tries in the last four minutes. So it, it certainly is possible. Stade Francais will not be easing off in any way. But this is an important time now, really, for Toulouse to, to leave. You don't want to leave with three points. They've got to leave with something. As a goer, penalised for that. Just getting uh, marooned around the side. Firm, firm hit there from Stade Francais, but they're shifting. Movaka, he's eyeing up a little bit of space around the right-hand side. Where's this going? Still moving in the right direction. Toulouse, they got the advantage. Could be a penalty try if this gets collapsed over the try line. Well, there's Mirfu, they get a penalty. Trying to grapple hook is... Uh, Abrimashvili out of the way. I think it was Hirigoyen who just got himself 
on the wrong side there. It was too far out for him to contemplate really a, a penalty try. As the, I think they, do they think the, the mall's still going on? Well, Miafu is just, you know, his tempers are flaring. He's a very calm, you know, person. We've, we've seen him not get rattled in the, in the you know, since he, he turned up at Toulouse and, you know, he's like, he's not like this calm person, but ever since he's got French nationality, you know, something's happened. He's turned into Loss this of discipline. Of monster, you know? no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact is that he's... Uh, well, look, now, 15 points down, they need some lucidity as well. Yeah, it's all very well to be abrasive and combative, but they, they need to score points. Stade Francais, they've got no worries at all if players lose their rag on both sides. Yeah. But Toulouse really need to stay focused on the job at hand. They've got to go these five metres here to put themselves really in a, in a good chance to come back into this game. You know, Mia Fuga, Mia Fuga getting rattled, you know, might be a positive thing because, you know, this is the Classico. It has been deemed as like sort of, you know, a battle between two rivals, regardless of the difference in distance in the city. Line out one there, perfectly won there by Flower. It's uh, taken forward and they got the advantage. There's going to be a yellow card, surely. Movaka's at the back, Dupont's behind him. Dupont, Dupont off the back, chucks it over the top. That is absolutely sensational from Antoine Dupont. And finished off there by Pierre-Louis Barassi. His second try this season for Toulouse. He races back into position following the Ramos conversion. And now they get going once again. Toulouse are looking hungry now. And the small pools of Toulouse supporters flapping their flags in the stands. Yeah, it's a sublime piece of play from Antoine Dupont and a great take in the air from Barassi as well. The Fords had done about as well as they could. I think it, well, a penalty was obviously coming, but it took the backs to put the icing on the cake and that man Dupont, beautiful little pass here. I'm not sure what they're looking. They're just checking because Toulouse do not want Stade Francais to have time to regroup. Stade Francais, of course, are going to take every opportunity they can. Here's Sigon coming slowly back into it. He's got a perform the kickoff so he was the man to go down and get some treatment and try and slow this down because they do not want to lose suddenly surging back down their end of the field so a little bit of mind games going on here between the two teams as well yeah and uh, an intriguing finale they've got 12 points a bit of strapping around the around the boot there and the ankle but uh, 20 points to 12 Segon hits it as high up in the sky as possible. Miafu, strong take out of the 22. So he's got to stay in play if they kick. But of course, they're not going to. This is Toulouse. Chucking the ball out wide, an opportunity. Batty Shaman, Batty Shaman, got to tackle him. You can't hit him high. Grab his mo. <laughs> well, it's a good pass out to Tozan. Tozan, chip over the top. Oh, this is just out of play. Okay. Such a good little slick piece of rugby as well. If you had stayed in play, it would have been a great option. Leo Barry races up, wants to take it quickly, but no. Still 10 minutes to play, Mertz. What a ball this was from Dupont. That's Aaron Smith's another good one at doing that. Just that flat ball where you can hit any one of a number of runners. And yeah, desperately unlucky for Tozan. But just little moments like that, you can never, ever relax against Toulouse. They still made plenty of ground down that blind side. They can still put some pressure on here at the line out. From one fewer option probably now for Stade Francais with Fundamesh. He's probably more a lifter than a jumper. You can see him in position. So not as many options perhaps for the Stade Francais line out. Ivaldi. There it is, nicely taken there by Hirigoyen. But watch out because Miafu, so there you go. His job, JJ Van der Van de Mesh, is to basically hold Miafu away from getting his tentacles out of the way. Absolutely anything to stop him from getting in the way. And there it is for Kokot, the high kick. Lester Etienne will chase that. Tozan has been met by the former Massey player. Down on the ground, no ripping. And nine minutes to go here at Jean Boin. Alexandre Rumat, such a good, strong ball carrier. Not a term that I like to use, but he, he's just so good. Dupont just chucked around like a rag doll. Ramos gets the ball out, and there's the kick. Now, where's this going? Throw a dummy. Go inside. Lester Etienne just making sure that this is. Oh, a little sneaky move. 
Cockrot, Cockrot, running around like a teenager, gets the ball alive, Barry gets the pass, oh, he's going to go all the way, this is unreal, Barry for a double tonight, what about that meandering, slaloming run there from the young fullback, the Stade Francais respond in an emphatic way, and they move now 13 points ahead, that is spectacular, formidable, oh la 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 la. Absolute genius, Robbie, from this man here, Rory Cocotte. The fresher legs, perhaps, than a lot of others on the field. He's seen an opportunity just within that one metre space, and off he went. Thought of the kick and chase, went and found his support. So was Leo Barre looking for his support as well. But in the end, the defenders ran off him, and he put them to the sword. Scored at the start of the match, Barre scores at the end of the match, perhaps. A symmetrical performance, and one that looks like it is turning into that Confirmed Stade Francais victory now in the midst of a Toulouse fight back. Rory Kakot. I mean, he's just unbelievable. This man is unbelievable. He was only meant to stay around for a few games during the Rugby World Cup, and then he was going to head off. You know, he's going to be part of the coaching staff. No, he's just said, oh, I might play the rest of the season. I'm feeling okay. I mean, he's just had an incredible career, isn't he? Well, as a halfback, you might only get an opportunity like that once every five or six games, on, if that. And so the key to making it count is to be aware of it, to always be looking, no matter game after game. Those chances don't come about, but when they do, you've got to take them. And he was able to do that unbelievably well. And the finish, the support play that got up, he was able to soak up some time by angling back infield. There he throws the pass. Barre skips through the, the attempted clutch of Rumat but just has the pace and the strength to, to get across. Crucial try for Stade Francais. Played 26 games, Leo Barry, last season. And I, I want him on the pitch every single, every, for every single match that he, uh, that he can because he's sensational and he really is. And a couple of changes. We've got Julian Ori, the former Toulon, Toulonnais, who's come on. And a change in the in the front row as well. Vasil Kakovin and uh, Matey coming on for Evaldi. It was a great kick. The distance from Kokot, absolutely perfect. Just the little difference, five metres one way or the other, just turns that into a much lesser kick. You know, maybe 30 or 40 percent the effectiveness, but that was right on the money. Perfect for the chases and difficult to take. Swirling around a little bit up there, I think, as well, in that icy Parisian wind. There he is, Métis. He's the, uh, another espoir. Who's uh, come on, Alain Métis. It's just his third game. He's played 51 minutes, the, uh, the replacement hooker. Big game for him as well. Ali Fanua has gone off. And Charles Lelois still on the pitch. What a big night for him, Robbie. That try in the corner as well, fantastic, exciting. A team performance like this. Nothing like that for a young player. On a big occasion as well. You're playing against the French champions. You're playing against the most successful team in France, and you score your first ever try. I mean, you know, that's something you can tell your you can tell your mates and uh, you know in the in the local cafe, every, you know, for as long as you live. You can tell them, but if they haven't seen it, they won't believe you. <laughs> the fairy tale, the, the dream, dive in the corner, over on the corner flag. <laughs> yeah, bien sûr, bien yeah, of sûr. course you did, yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, this is the second time they've been pinged for going in too quickly. And uh, they're in no rush, are they? Cockot knows, he knows about time. Time management, he's very good at that. You know, he's, um, he's quietened down a little bit in his older years, isn't he? <laughs> oh, no. That's a wobbler. Watch out. There's a little bit of pressure. And uh, he doesn't make the mark. And uh, Oh, he did make the mark, OK. Well taken, Alexandre Ruma, because he's hit that right in the belly of the ball, Cocotte. There's not a lot you can do with a free kick. I, I think we've got to address that. I thought they might have taken a scrum, but there's a quick tap from Ruma. Good pass out wide, Tozan, Tozan likes to go on a little bit of a dance, there he is. Oh, he's just chosen the wrong player to pass to. Métis was there, 
and uh, he's got a little bit of support. He's trying to turn himself. It's a turnover ball, and Dupont picks it up, chucks a big pass over the top. Here is uh, Ramos and uh, Alexandre Ruma again, swashbuckling, locomotive of a human being. No more advantage being played here. Dupont digs for it, goes right. Oh, it's a, just a, it's a knock on, and even Dupont and Gelon just not seeing eye to eye. That's very rare. You know, for me, this is probably one of the, the most average performances that I've seen Toulouse play this season. Well, it, it's unusual to see. This is the run from Tozan, another great ball, and the vision of Dupont to send it out wide. But it's very rare that you see Dupont make, make an error like this. He's, here's the, the run as well from Rumart. But then Dupont's pass to Geelong, who was very close. You know, you need a really sympathetic pass. And just unusual to see that from Dupont, just forcing the ball a little bit. And it was a hard one. It was down low for Geelong. It was just too tough. And as you say, you know, the amount of those little add-ups over the... over the and, and that's, you know, you've got to give credit as well to the, the star Francais defence because it has caused some anxiety in the Toulouse attack. They have pushed things a little bit at times, and that is a reflection that they're, they're finding it difficult out there. So big ups, and big ups to Sagan as well. He's missed a couple, but he has kept that scoreboard ticking over. 174 tackles, 93, 21 missed, 17 missed for uh, Toulouse. Stade Francais going again. That's uh, taken well by Ramos. Running into trouble. Look at the attempt at ripping that ball out of Ramos's hands. Very dangerous player, Barassi, when he gets going. But uh, defense holding very well. Or he's very strong at the breakdown. You'll see him, he's fearless. Well, that's uh, very messy. Play the advantage. Oh, it's in the basket. There it is, another. Another first try for a former Espoir player. First try as a pro for Mate, Mamadou Ellen Mate, 20 years of age. And there's a smile on the face there for Karim Gazelle. Charles Lenoir first, and now the substitute hooker Mate. This is a brilliant moment, isn't it? Of course, you can let off the, the fireworks. 32 points to 12. And they're not far away from getting a bonus offensive point as well. Well, a huge moment of excitement for Stade Francais. I wonder if it's going to be short-lived, though, because I think there were double knock-on there. I think Toulouse knocked it on, and I think it knocked back forward again from Stade Francais, right back in the middle of the field. Whether there's the opportunity to go back and look at that, but I'm pretty sure there was a knock-on from Stade Francais after the Toulouse one. I still think they'll get a scrum, which would be a shame for Mate. Great support play. So the knock-on, first of all, it's gone back. Then it's gone forward from Toulouse there. And I think that's a knock-on from Briard. I don't think I thought it... That comes off his back. It's been picked up there. I think it came off uh, Barassi. Watch this. I don't know if Briat's hand was there. But they're going to get... There's going to be a penalty going against that front side, even if they kick the conversion and the try has been awarded. That's what Monsieur Trainini's talking about. Question is, does it come off... Yeah, it's, it looks like it's come off Briat's hand. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Mertz, tonight. Well, it just looked messy enough at the time for me to take a guess. Yep, scrum to start Francais. The first knock-on was from Toulouse. And then you wonder where that sort of... You know, if it's going to be a penalty after the, after the fact anyway, after the try, if it's sort of categorised as foul play, is it not worth still giving the penalty? Because, you know, taking those moments out of the game, because they are what leads inevitably to inflammation amongst the players, yep. the fight that erupts because there are, whether it's cheap shots or cheeky shots or whatever. Shame for me, T, because it was a, a big moment for him for that try. It would have been a moment of magic for Mamadou El Amiti. Not happening. Kareem Gazelle. Formerly the line-out coach at Lyon. Working under Pierre Mignoni. Rory Kakot. In it goes. 
Big scrum off the back, Hiragoyen tries to go around the outside. Here's Kokot once again. Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Where's Kokot going? Little kick down into the corner. Who's going to take it? Well, it's been taken away by Antoine Dupont. Yeah, Mr. Everywhere. 13, five meters. Well, they're going to get the results regardless, Stad Francais. I can't see them coming back. Well, there's only a few seconds remaining, of course, but 27-12, uh, no bonus points. But uh, I just think it's a question of getting the win over the French champions. Here we go, and he's been such a human battle axe tonight, hasn't he? And Rumat's been good, but he's una unable to get his hands on this. Well, you won't get a bonus point if you score another try. This is just being kicked out. <laughs> oh, no. There we go. Just take it out. It doesn't matter. This is all about beating Toulouse. And Stade Francais, led by an inspired Rory Cocotte, take the win. Paris 27, Toulouse 12. Very important win, and uh, those four points that they'll take from this move them up to 27. Some of the youngsters, look at these guys, this is brilliant. Charles Lenoir scoring on his, uh, his first try as, uh, in, as a senior player in this uh, Stade Francais team. Mamadou Mete missing out, but some, some great rugby that was played there by Stade Francais. At key moments, they just managed to they game managed better than Toulouse, and their defence was rock solid, but uh, they just held on to produce the right win. Yeah, absolutely, a, a victory based on their defence, the, the robust defence, and the, I guess the scragging and the, the covering and, and just getting back up off, their, off the ground again, getting onto their feet, making those hits, fighting Toulouse in every tackle, wrestling them backwards when they could, and... You know, throughout, we've said that it's very, very unusual to see Toulouse with so much possession fail to score many points, and particularly to go scoreless in the first half. That put a little bit more stress on Toulouse. Yes, they showed glimpses of what they can do, but in the face of that ferocious defence, really, Stade Francais fully deserving of that victory tonight. And that'll be a great confidence builder for them as they go into Europe. Across to Manchester next week to play against Sale, and that's a good way to finish off this period of the top 14. Yeah, very important victory. And then they've got Leicester in their own backyard. Another team that were victorious today. But uh, how about this? Another victory off the back of two defeats, of course. Uh, uh, losing against Poe and then Rassing in their own backyard. And now they find their winning ways once again. And they're now on 27 points. So... Uh, at the top, they're uh, two points behind Racing and one point behind Toulon and Cast, level with Poe and uh, in fifth position. Toulouse don't get anything from that, they still stay in the top six. But uh, I think we just got to show that they've, um, they've showed that they've got grit, Stade Francais. And I think that's something that you can underline from the Stade Francais team because, you know, defensively, they were uh, pushed to their limits tonight, but um, they only conceded. Well, they just, uh, what, conceded 12 points? That's not too bad. But Ugo Mola, they've got a bit of work to do, haven't they? They're just uh, losing out in the rucks. Uh, not looking like the Toulouse that would, can go all the way, but you can never count Toulouse out. They nearly came back. No, maybe not, not enough variety in their game tonight. You mentioned the, the, the lack of kicking, the little grubbers, little chip kicks over the top. We know they can do that. I'm surprised, really, with Ramos at 10 who's such a, 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 a prolific kicker that he didn't bring a little more variety to that. But that's easily said. They do have a strong history of doing well, using the ball, keeping the ball in hand. Um, just couldn't adapt really too much to, tonight. And against start from, say, a motivated defence, it was just too tough for Toulouse. And what is it about this this ground for them coming up here? That's What's that stat now? Is that 10, ten times? Ten, so ten, ten, 10 defeats. There you go. 10 years, 10 defeats. They hit double figures and not the way they want to. So, yeah, that's that's great. That's the, the, the great thing about uh, the, the French top 14. As you say, the, the champions here are up against another top team. But, you know, it's so tough for them to come exact, up and, exactly. and, and play uh, against these teams. Uh, 
Romain, ça ressemble un peu au, au match référence, au, au match forfait, en tout cas dans l'intensité, et notamment en défense au soir. On imagine que vous êtes, vous êtes fiers à l'issue de ces 4 minutes. Défense, c'est très important. On s'est retrouvé sur, sur nos bases, yeah, sur nos points really, de We found uh, our base voilà, again tonight. Ça fait, ça fait and, extrêmement plaisir ce soir. Played it well. voilà, very proud of the boys tonight. 25 à 40, euh, on a... On a un groupe incroyable. Enfin, And we got a massive de, de team, match. great team. We really found ourselves énorme. tonight against the ouais, uh, French champions. Début de saison, donc, uh, And uh, it's, uh, bon it's great, it's a great feeling to rediscover what we've actually got and players that we've got here within this group. Dans l'actualité, est-ce que ça vous a resserré On a l'impression quand on voit notamment ce, ce, ce combat en défense que ça vous a peut-être resserré ce, ce climat euh, difficile. Ouais, tout à fait, euh, tout à fait. On en avait besoin. Uh, voilà, je pense que ce yeah, we needed to have a, uh, have a game a that was uh, there was about fighting, de, the fighting public, spirit. Voilà, cette semaine, la solidarité, uh, je pense And we, we ce found our solidarity this week. Uh, voilà, y a pas mal de choses qui sont sorties. So a few issues that we had this week. Ce soir, ça payé, donc, uh, And uh, we discussed them, and uh, it, you know, is the, the result is tonight, and you know, the victory that we've actually got from this game. Mathis Lebel qui, euh, qui vient à notre micro. Merci, merci Mathis de vous arrêter. Qu'est-ce qui vous a manqué ce soir pour, euh, pour gagner ce match, pour rivaliser avec Paris What was missing in the game ouais, tonight manqué, euh, je beaucoup de choses, alors, Lots of things were missing. Ouais, déjà une un peu approximative. Yeah, our euh, euh, defense euh, was mediocre. Euh, euh, something we worked on during the week as well, but yeah, yeah, the discipline wasn't, et, uh, wasn't good either. Donc voilà, ce qui nous a manqué. Après, bon, on a eu des intentions de jeu, ça c'est bien. Yeah, we had good intentions out there, trying to play the game, but we, we knew that we came up against the best defense in the top captors, and you know, they showed it tonight. And we need to, you know, we were hoping to get some confidence going into the Champions Cup as we can, but you know, we've still got a bit of work to do, I'm afraid, and uh, we're going to have to focus on that.